Welcome to Lecture Online. Here we have an example of a non-homogeneous differential equation of the second order. So now here we have an example where we can use the Laplace transform to solve for a differential equation like this. Notice the initial conditions. And let's just get right into it. The way you solve that is by taking the Laplace transform of both sides of the equation. On the left side, we get the following. We get s squared times the Laplace transform of y minus s times the function evaluated zero minus the first derivative of the function evaluated zero. So this is the Laplace transform of y double prime plus six times the Laplace trans transform of y prime which is s times the Laplace transform of y minus the function evaluated at zero. Of course don't forget that you have to multiply this times the coefficient six. And then we get plus 8 times the Laplace transform of y equals the Laplace transform of the right side of the equation, and that would be 2 times the Laplace transform of the unit step function, which means that this is equal to 2 times 1 over s. All right, now we're ready to solve for the Laplace transform of y. So on the left side, we can already factor out a Laplace transform of y, so we get L of y times, we have an s squared, we have a 6 times s, and we have an 8 right here, plus 8. Okay, what do we have left? On the left side, we have a minus s times the function evaluated 0, which is equal to 1, so minus s times 1, that would be minus s. And here we have minus f prime, but yeah, I wrote f prime. Maybe I should write this. That this is okay. So the function evaluated at the derivative of the function evaluated at zero is minus two times a minus, which is plus two. And here we have six times y evaluated at zero. That would be equal to one, but there's a minus there, so it's minus six. And I think we have everything accounted for equals two over s. I know I got a little mixed in here, I have a y at 0 and here I have an f at 0, but that really means the same thing in this case, it's the function or y. So not to get confused, I think I'll just make this a y, and I'll make this a y prime so we stay consistent. It's always good to be consistent there. Okay, now simplifying this a little bit more, we can write this as the Laplace transform of y times s squared. Now this can be factored, so we can write this as s plus 4 times s plus 2 is equal to, and moving this over to the other side, this is a minus s minus 4 that becomes 2 over s minus s that becomes a plus s and plus 4. Now I want to write it over a single denominator, so I'm going to write this as 2 plus s squared plus 4s over s. And I believe we can probably factor that if I put the plus 2 over here. No, I don't think we can factor that. Nope, that's, that's the way it's going to be. And finally, moving this over to the other side, we can say that the Laplace transform of y is equal to, on the numerator, we get s squared plus 4s plus 2. In the denominator, we get s times s plus 4 times s plus 2. Now we're going to use the method of partial fractions to write it as the sum of three fractions because we have three terms in the denominator that are multiplied, so this can be written as a over s plus b over s plus 4 plus c over s plus 2. And now all we have to do is find out what a, b, and c are, so we can then take the inverse Laplace transform to solve for the function y. Okay, what we're going to do is multiply, just look at this portion alone. We're just going to look at this alone. And we're going to multiply both sides by s times s plus 4 times s plus 2 to get rid of this. When we do that, we get the following. We get s squared plus 4s plus 2 is equal to... We multiply this here times the denominator, the s's cancel out, we get a times the product of these two, 
which we have written right there. So it'll be s squared plus 6s plus 8 plus b times the product of s times s plus 2. That would be s squared plus 2s plus c times the product of these two, which is s squared plus 4s. And then if we compare the left side to the right side, we then realize that the coefficient of s squared must be equal to the sum of the coefficients of s squared over here, which means that 1 must be equal to a plus b plus c. Then the coefficient of s right here, which is 4, must equal the sums of the coefficients of s over here, which means that we have 4 is equal to 6a plus 2b plus 4c. And finally, luckily, there's only one that corresponds to the 2 right here. We have 2 is equal to a times 8, or 8a, which means that a is equal to 1 quarter. All right, so we already have one of the three. We have a, now we have to solve for b and c. What I can do is I can plug in the value for a in this equation and solve this for b in terms of c to substitute into the third equation. So here we can write this as 1 equals 1 quarter plus b plus c, which means if we solve it for b, we get b is equal to 1 minus a quarter, which is 3 quarters. And when we move the c to the other side, we get minus c. And that then can get substituted into this middle equation. So we can say that this equation can become 4 is equal to 6a, but remember that a is 1 quarter, that would be 6 quarters or 3 halves, plus 2 times b, remember b was equal to 3 over 4, minus c, and then plus 4c. And so you can see now that the third equation only has the one variable c in it, which we can then easily solve for. All right, 4 equals 3 halves plus 2 times 3 quarters, which is 3 halves, minus 2c plus 4c. Simplifying that further, we get 4 equals 3 halves plus 3 halves is 3, minus 2c plus 4c is plus 2c, which means that 2c equals 1, or c equals 1 half. So now we have the second of the three unknowns. All I need now is the value for b, which I can get from here. So b is equal to 3 quarters minus c, which is minus 1 half, which is 2 quarters. 3 quarters minus 2 quarters is 1 quarter. So b is equal to positive 1 quarter. All right, let's quickly see if that's correct when we go back to the first equation. 1 has to be a plus b plus c. a plus b plus c is indeed equal to 1. So it looks like those three values are correct. Now let's go ahead and realize that the Laplace transform of y is equal to the sum of these three. Now that we know what a, b, and c are, we can write that the Laplace transform of y can be written as a over s, and a is a quarter, so one quarter over s, plus b is also a quarter, one quarter over s plus four, and finally plus one half for c over s plus 2. Now you can see it's fairly easy to find the Laplace transform of that. So we can say that y is equal to the inverse Laplace transform of 1 quarter over s plus a quarter over s plus 4 plus a half over s plus 2. And therefore we can say that y is equal to, that would be 1 quarter times the Laplace transform of 1 over s is simply the unit function, like this, plus 1 quarter the unit function, the unit step function, but we have a shift here, s plus 4, that means we need to write e to the minus 4t for the shift of 4 units there, and then we have plus 1 half the unit function, oop, 1 half, don't need parentheses there, unit function of t times e to the minus 2t. And of course, we can then factor out the u of t, and so we can say that y is equal to, we can factor out a one quarter, one quarter 
u of t like this times 1 plus e to the minus 4t and here we have to write it would be plus 2 because 2 times a quarter gives us 1 half uh, times e to the minus 2t and that's probably the most compact form of writing the solution there's different ways of writing it but that's definitely a good one so again the technique is you have your initial differential equation you have your initial conditions you take the Laplace transform of both you then pull to the side all the terms that have the Laplace transform of y, the function you're solving for. So these are the coefficients of that. The remaining parts then move to the other side. You combine them over a single uh, denominator. Then you divide both sides by this coefficient. Then you use the partial fractions to solve for a, b, and c, because now you can write it as a sum of three simple uh, fractions. And then you take the, Laplace, the inverse Laplace transform to solve for the ultimate function. And that's how it's done.